church on the hill. And when that old fashioned preacher gave out that Peter deal, then each heart with the Holy Ghost was filled. And the people would be shouting, Praise God, I hear them still in that little wooden church on the hill. I hadn't even thought of that song in many years. If, wait a minute, I wait. If I can hear an amen, I've tried to remember the last verse. Yeah. You know, as you get older, you can't remember as well as you used to. How many know that's true? I heard about two old men. They were getting old. One of them met, they met, you know, face to face. One of them said to the other, said, I think I know you. He said, I'm not sure. I can't remember as well as I used to, but I think I know you. He said, uh, seems like I remember you. He said, seems like I remember your family, too. He said, I can't remember, but seems like if I remember correctly, somebody in your family died, but I can't remember whether it was you or your brother. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you folks can sing. These Texans can sing. Now you're you're Angie, right? And you're Nell. Nella. But Nella, you were talking about her being an old maid. You never said a word about you being an old maid, too. That's right. Yeah. Did you know the other day they were talking among themselves? Just the two of them. They were sitting around talking, you know. And she said to uh, Nella said to Angie, she said, you know. It seems to be the thing to do to sort of plan your funeral while you're young or while, you know, get, and, and Angie said, well, that's all right, that, let's do that. So they started planning, and, and Angie said, well, and Nellie said, well, who would you like to do, do, do preach your funeral? And Angie said, well, you know, she told her pastor, and, and so pretty soon they got down to it. She said, well, uh, Angie, who would you like for your pallbearers? And Angie said, well, I think I'll have Joyce, and I, I want Mary, and... And I want Susie. And she said, well, Angie, don't you want some men as Paul Barry? She said, if they didn't love me enough to take me out when I'm living, I'm not going to let them carry me out when I'm dead. Oh, man. Oh, man. Well, I don't know where that really happened now, but it's a good story for two old maids, I'll tell you. I understand you believe the Bible. She said, I do, son. He said, every word. She said, every word. Oh, ma'am. He said, what about that story that big fish swallowed the man? She said, you're talking about Jonah and the whale. And she said, I believe that too. He said, lady, how are you going to prove such a story? She said, well, when I get to heaven, I'll ask him. He said, what if he's not up there? She said, then you ask him. <laughs> you know, like the one where the little boy went to church, came home, and mother said, son, what'd you learn? He said, a war story. She said, a war story? He said, yeah. She said, about what? He said, about General Moses. Well, she said, son, what did they tell you about a man named General Moses? Are you sure? He said, yes, ma'am. She said, well, what did they say? He said, well, they told us this man was General Moses, had a big army, and he was running from this other army, and he got out to this big pile of water, and he couldn't get across, and the other army was coming. So General Moses got on his walkie-talkie, and he called out the Navy, and they came out there and built a pontoon bridge across this pile of water. And, and General Moses took his arm and he was running across the bridge and said he looked back and the other army was coming after him. So General Moses got on his walkie-talkie and he called out the Air Force and they came and bombed the bridge and the other army drowned. She said, my God, son, is that what they told you? He said, no, but if I told you what they told me, you wouldn't believe it either, you know. <laughs> Folks, how many are as happy as your face is indicating? Let's see your hand. Are you? How many enjoyed that meal tonight, didn't you? Tell you that was something, huh? You know, senior here seems to happy remind me of the fellow they, they invited the preacher out to the mental institution, you know, and wanted to give the chapel service. So the preacher went out to the mental institution and they all gathered in the chapel and he stood up and he said, Now, do you, do you know why we're here? One man stood up to the air because we're not all there. Well, <laughs> yeah, we can tell another story. Oh, I got a zillion stories. I, I didn't. I just love stories. Do y'all love stories? Yeah. yeah, I just love stories. I, I, you know, Adam and Eve was walking down by the garden one day, and as they walked down by the garden, I mean, Adam had his two little boys, Cain and Abel. He said, boys, you know what happened right over there? They said, no, Dad. He said, that's where your mom made us out of a house and home, right? <laughs> I guess. And this, they've come to celebrate their 40th wedding anniversary. Isn't that right? That's right. Your wife told me that she said, we've been, hang on just a minute. So your wife told me, she said, we've been married about 37 happy years. And I said, well, I thought it was 40. She said, well, 37 happy ones out of 40 is not bad. <laughs> Preacher one time went out to play, and he was playing golf, and uh, it was, he played it all the time. And then the days and weeks had gone by, and he hadn't had a chance to play. And finally, on 
One Sunday morning, he got up, and it was a beautiful day, beautiful day. And he told his wife, he said, you know, it's been a week since I've had a chance to play. I'm going to let my assistant play the game, and I'm going to sneak out and play a little golf. And so he was out there, and the angel came up and said to the Lord, said, Lord, there's, there's your servant out there playing golf on Sunday morning. He said, I think you ought to punish him. The Lord said, all right, I'll, I'll take care of that. Next time the old boy teed off, I mean, he teed off, the ball sailed over, hit a tree, bounced across, hit another tree, back on the green, there was a hole in one. The angel said, Lord, that, you didn't punish him, made a hole in one. He said, yeah, but it's Sunday morning, who can he tell? <laughs> Did y'all know that serving Jesus is like a broken drum? That's right, you can't beat it. <laughs> great man of God, great preacher. Not long ago, you know, they were, he, Tom and I, his wife, been married 25 years, and so he thought, well, you know, we ought to take a little trip, and they, they went out west, you know, just to see sightsee, and they were traveling out west, and way out in the boonies out there in Colorado, they stopped on by the little cafe, and there was a ball bar, probably about 15 or 20 people in there, and they were eating, and suddenly the door burst open, and some guys came in with guns pulled, and they said, you know, we're, we're, this is a hold up, we're going to rob everybody in here, and, one of the guys raised up and said, and yeah, we're going to rob the men and kiss all the women. And old Tom jumped up. He said, you may rob the men, but you're not touching my wife. She jerked him back down and said, sit down, Tom. Let Jesse rob this cafe. <laughs> There's a story that, that, that they tell about common bond. When Matthew, their older brother, was born, the doctor told uh, their mom that you may not have any more children. And... And it bothered her. And so she and uh, their father went to their pastor and they told him what the doctor had said. And the doctor said, and the pastor said, well, uh, let me pray. Let's just pray. And so he, the pastor anointed them with oil. And, and then the, some months went by and sure enough, Mark, Luke, and John were born. And then shortly thereafter, they went back to the, to the pastor's study. And, and uh, their father told the minister, said, oh, we thank you for your prayers. And we thank you for praying and anointing my wife. And now that we have three more boys. And he said, well, I knew God was, was listening to my prayer, but I didn't know how closely he was listening. He said, I anointed your wife with three in one oil. And, <laughs> and about that time, their mother just jumped up and hugged the preacher and just squeezed him and squeezed him. And finally, she stepped back and he said, what was that for? She said, I'm glad you didn't use WD-40. <laughs> As you get older, sometimes you don't have quite as much energy. And uh, it reminds me, when I, said, when I said that, it reminded me of this, this young pastor. He was about 25 or 30 years old, and he was pastoring his church. And one day, you know, some folks said they didn't need to talk to him, and, and he went to his office, and they brought him in, and it was a real old lady about, oh, she was about 70, 72 or 3, and, and her husband was a little older than that. And she said, Preacher, said, I said, I need for you to talk to Herman. She said, uh, said Herman doesn't show me any attention anymore. said, she said, and I just need some attention. She said, and Herman never showed me much attention. And she said, I'm just starved for attention. And she rattled on and on and on for about 30, 45 minutes. Finally, this young preacher, he got enough of it. He just walked around where she was and picked her up in his arms. And man, he planted one on her. He kissed her. He held it for a little bit. When he pushed her back, she said, woo-wee. She said, now that's what I need. That's what I need. He said, Herman. She's going to need that about twice a week. He said, all right, I'll bring her in on Tuesday and Thursday. <laughs> Wanted to go on vacation, told his wife. He said, honey, let's go to Florida for a vacation. She said, honey, on your salary, we can't afford to get out of town. You know, we can't go to Florida. He said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, honey. He said, we need to get away and said, I'll get a job while we're there. She said, well, if you think you can do it. So they went down to Daytona Beach, and they landed, you know, got there, and he got them in a motel. He said, went off for a couple of hours. He came back. He said, I got a job. She said, what you going to do? He said, I'm going to be a lifeguard. She said, honey, you can't even swim. He said, don't worry about it. I've been watching them see what they do, and all they do is just sit up in that chair, and that's all they do. He said, we're only going to be here a week, and surely nothing will happen. So he was sitting up in the chair. Wife and kids was enjoying the beach, you know, and a couple of days went by, and sure, nothing happened. About the third day, a big wave came in. Man, big wave. Watched a lot of way out in the water, and they were standing out there, way out to the deep with their hands up, hollering, help, help, help. She looked around to see what her husband was doing. He was standing up in the chair saying, yes, I see that hand. God bless you. Yes, I see that <laughs> <laughs> he was a real Baptist preacher, all right, I'll tell you. He's just among friends you can...
can just tear loose and enjoy it. You know, I like that. Oh, this old guy was at church one time, you know, and he was just visiting. It was one of these, you know, kind of uptown toity toity church. And, and so the preacher's preaching said, he said, praise the Lord. The usher said, shh. Sat there a little bit and the preacher was preaching. He said something pretty good. He said, hallelujah. The usher said, shh. The preacher came to a little bit more and pretty soon the old fellow felt pretty good. He said, glory to God. He said, shh. He said, well, I got religion. He said, you didn't get it here. Shh. <laughs> you heard about the lady that lost her credit card, didn't you? And she kept waiting to get it back, and she told her husband about it, and he kept waiting and waiting. He said, she said, uh, honey, you're not, pretty, you're not working very hard to find my credit card. He said, the guy that found it's using it less than you did, so I'm going to let him keep it. <laughs> he, he's a very wonderful preacher, but also he's got a lot of wisdom. In fact, while he was pastoring uh, Oak, Oakwood Baptist Church, Maurice went to him one time and he said, you know, Pastor, do you know Mr. Jones that sings in the choir? He said, yeah. He said, well, you know, he's getting up in years. He's, he's pushing 80. And he said, said sometimes his voice cracks and he's a little off pitch and said, maybe you could find another job for him to do, you know, in the church and, because we love him and he's sweet, but he's not the singer he used to be. And maybe you could find him another place to you know, to worship and to work in the church. Brother Rice said, no problem, I can handle that. So he went over to see Brother Jones, and he said, Brother Jones, I, I've been thinking about your your place in the church. said, man, everybody knows you. said, you're known by everybody in the community, and you're such a witness for Christ, and you've got such a welcoming. Why, would, you, would, would you mind serving as maybe a, one of our welcoming ushers and meet people at the door as they come in? And and greet them. You're such a good man with personality. Oh, he said, Pastor, I'd like to do that, but my place is in the choir. <laughs> so Pastor said, well, Brother Jones, you know, I, I know you've been singing there a long time, but uh, and you, but you've got so many friends and everybody knows you, and you're, you're such a, a welcome to our church. You represent us so well. With, maybe it would be a real broad in your ministry to so just be at the door and, and greet folks. He said, oh, I'd like to, Pastor, but my place is in the choir. He said, I, I just don't want to miss that. So he thought he'd try one more time. He said, you know, Brother Jones, we've been thinking about uh, putting somebody maybe on a little payroll here at the church and as something that would sort of help him. And we know you're up in years. Maybe it'd help a little bit if you could maybe assume that responsibility at the door of seeing people have a bulletin. For he said, Pastor, oh, I'd like that. And I, I might could use the money. He said, but my place is in the choir. So pastor well i might as well just be honest with him he said brother jones he said i'm a i didn't want to have to tell you but to be very honest with you he said you know you've been in the choir many years and your voice is not what it used to be and 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 you're you know maybe you're not quite as good at it you're not right on pitch you can't sing as well as you used to we thought maybe you could find another place oh he said pastor how many told you that well he said two or three came to me oh, i said don't worry about that said more and that's told me you can't preach but we don't want you to leave <laughs> jokes you know when you're Baptist you can tell jokes about yourself y'all y'all hear about I turned around to see these guys sing made me think about this one and the, the Baptist church burned you know, it burned to the ground it's about Tuesday and they said man what are we gonna do and the preacher said well there's a tavern down you know got about a half a mile down here and and they're not busy on Sunday I'm gonna ask him maybe we can just meet there he went down and asked the tavern owner he said hey, you don't mind if we meet here on Sunday he said well preacher you know we don't have anything going on if you if you want to use it, be, it'd be fine with me. And he said, you know, we don't end up till Saturday night about 2 in the morning. And, uh, you know, he said, I'll have to clean it up and get it ready. And he said, well, I'll take care of that. And he said, of course, you know, we just got all these uh, dishes and glasses around. And the old parrot said, he'll stay here. He said, no problem. He said, he won't bother us. Well, Sunday morning about 7 o'clock, preacher went down. He was cleaning up. The old parrot over in the corner said, oh, new bartender. He said, no, I'm not a new bartender. I'm just, I'm just here cleaning up, you know. Said, we're going to be using this place. Well, about 9.30, the choir came in. They were going, ooh, ooh. Old Parrot said, ah, new entertainment. He said, no, no, this is the choir. Said, they're going to be singing. About 11 o'clock, the folks begin to get in, come in. The old Parrot said, oh, same old crowd. <laughs> A 
little boy was going in church and he asked his mother, he said, Mom, is that, uh, who are those names up there on the wall, you know, up there on the plaque up there? And she said, oh, very solemnly, she said, son, that's for the men and women who died in service. He said, morning or night? <laughs> his wife came on a cruise, you know, over to, over to the Bahamas and, and they got out in a storm a little ways out here and she got washed overboard and boy, they searched two or three hours. Finally, the boat said, you know, we just can't search anymore. We'll have to go on. So they... They went on their way, and it, I guess it was a month later, he got a phone call, a phone call from, from the ship line, said, we found your wife, and she's been found on uh, the edge of a remote island out here in the edge of the water, and uh, said she had an oyster caught in her mouth, and, and said, uh, we just need to know what to do. Can you tell us? The old man thought a minute, he said, yes, send me the pearl out of the oyster and reset the trap. <laughs> Verses. And, you know, some time ago, just back last summer, uh, Tom was in a meeting. He's an evangelist, and he was at this, it was sort of a country church, you know, not a very real big one. He goes to the big ones, the little ones, and all of them. And it wasn't too big a church, but it's sort of in the country area. And he was there for a meeting, and, and, and you know how they are in small communities. They're sort of closely bound. And so the, the ladies of the church decided they would just have some of the ministers over to them. The little pavilion out beside the church, they would just have them share a little lunch. So they did. Some of the ministers gathered in. They were having lunch and they were sitting there and they got to talking. Brother Tom Hayes was talking with them. There was a Presbyterian there and a Methodist. and They got talking about which organization had the greatest preachers. You know. Oh, and the Presbyterian said, oh man, our, our organization surely has, the, you know, we're the most winning church organization. Now, we go back to John Knox and we've all learned that he changed Scotland. Boy, we've got a heritage. We're all super preachers. And uh, the Methodists said, well, you know, that's nothing. They said, man, we're, we got the Wesleys in our background. And while we had saved over 400,000 people, John we said, we all learned from him. Methodists are sure the more convincing of all the preachers. Tom said, well, now, you know, if you're just going to trace heritage, you got to remember that back in the Bible, we had a preacher named John. His last name was Baptist. And he said, uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, we're, we're probably the <clears throat> leapest and longest heritage. We're more successful. And as they were talking, they were looking, you know, just talking to us, sitting out there in a little pavilion, and the door of the church kind of cracked open, and a skunk, they saw, he said, look at that skunk. He's going in the church, and they were laughing about it. And Tom said, all right, let's just see you. Let's just have a little contest. He said, we'll just take turns and go in there and see who can preach strong enough to save that skunk. Boy, I tell you, the Presbyterian said, I'll show you. Well, he went in there, boy, and he was preaching away in about 15 minutes. He said, whoo, whoo. said, I just can't take any more of that. said, I didn't get him saved, but I just can't take any more. The old Methodist said, well, I, I'll be back and handle it. Man, he went in, and he was just preaching away in about 20, 25 minutes. He said, man, I just can't take that anymore. said, uh, I just couldn't make it. Old Tom said, no problem, I'll show you, boy, Baptist can handle it, no problem. Boy, he went in there and preached 25, 30, 45 minutes, about 55 minutes, the door cracked open, the stump came out, said, whew, I can't take that anymore. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know where that's true of all Baptists, and it's certainly not true of our Baptists, but well, I really shouldn't tell on them, I guess it's all right, though. Brother Burgess went off to preach a few, few nights revival. Oh, it's been back in the first part, you know, first getting a little chilly. And, but he was off preaching a few nights at a camp meeting. And he came home, and, and Joy had bought a brand-new fur coat. I mean, full-length mink, boy, I mean. And she prayed it out in front of Brother T. He said, what do you think about it, honey? He said, honey, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely beautiful. And it must cost, you know, seven or eight thousand dollars. But my goodness, we can't, we can't afford that, you know, on a Baptist preacher's salary. You know, we. She said, "Oh, but it looks so good." He, she said, "He said, but, but, honey, you, I, I know it looks good, but you were just tempted of the devil. I'm sure the devil just tempted you with that thing, and you gave in." She said, "Well," he said, "Honey, you should have told the devil, get behind me, devil." She said, "I did." He said, "It looked good from that side too." <laughs> It's been hot all summer. How many y'all been, have y'all been noticing how hot it is? I mean, I don't know where you're from, but it was hot in Tennessee. How about yours, huh? Yeah, it was, was it? Well, I mean, that's back in the winter. You didn't have 18 inches of snow in July, did you, honey? You better move. I'll take it. Yeah. But it was hot in Tennessee, I guarantee you. It was really hot. It really was. Well, it was so hot. 
The farmers were feeding the chickens crushed ice so they wouldn't lay hard boiled eggs. And it was dry too. We didn't have any rain. It was so dry the Baptists were sprinkling. <laughs> and the Methodists were using a damp cloth. Huh? <laughs> Presbyterians were passing out rain checks. Huh? <laughs> Our church is Baptist, and, and uh, we they arrived kind of late. We just hope they get there at all. <laughs> I went to a Baptist church the other day, and, and, and they had all the deacons on Sunday morning. Had them all sitting on the front row. I was impressed. Nine deacons sitting on the front row on Sunday morning. That was pretty good. And during the morning service, one of them had a heart attack. And they called for the paramedics, and they came. They had to check all nine so they could find the one that was almost dead. <laughs> well, I don't know where I've gotten the deacons here this morning. And I just lost a bunch of friends. I'll tell you. <laughs> it's all right. It's like the pastor, he was kind of getting a little feeble, looked like he was going to pass away, and his, his wife said, honey, is there anything that you really want if, if God takes you home? He said, yeah. I said, I want the deacons to be my pallbearers. She said, as much trouble as you've had with them, you want them to be your pallbearers? He said, yeah, they've let me down so far. I might as well do it one more time. <laughs> it seemed like the ladies are out front, and the men are all sort of standing back, you know. I don't know whether they're hands back or not, but I... <laughs> that reminds me of the story. St. Peter was looking out over heaven, you know, and there were two doors coming into heaven. And uh, uh, St. Peter looked, noticed that in one file over here, it said all the henpecked husbands get in this line. Man, the line was real long. And over here, it said all husbands that aren't henpecked get over here. There's only one guy over there. St. Peter looked down at him and said, why are you here? He said, my wife told me to get over here, you know. <laughs> There's a friend of mine that he, he loved to go bear hunting, you know, and his name was Elmer Jones. And, and so I did, you know, just, just wrote a story about it. It says that Elmer Jones arose at dawn and put his hunting breeches on and looked up at his shotgun on the wall. And he decided then and there to bag himself a hunk of bear because something he had plenty on the ball. So he milked the cow and slopped the hogs and kissed his wife and called the dogs, picked up his gun and started on his way. He crossed the branch and hit the tree, threw back his head and sniffed the breeze without a yell and pounded on his chest. Now, Elmer was tired and sick because he, he could be a lamb chop and pickle to eat a hunk of bear meat he wanted for a change. But Elmer hunted the whole day through, and not a bear came into view, and Elmer's mind went back home on the kitchen range. And Elmer's mind was in a fog, and he paused and sat down on a log to get his faculties back in the groove. He heard a noise, and standing there was a great big grizzly bear. He grabbed his gun and turned around, but Mr. Bear just stood his ground. Elmer said, now, Mr. Bear, it's either me or thou. Elmer's shoulders sprouted wings. His feet developed inner springs, and to linger longer, he was disinclined. He ran so fast through muck and mire, his ankle set his socks afire, but Mr. Bear kept coming on behind. And a deer with anglers eight feet wide got in the path of Elmer's stride, and Elmer said, now, listen, son, if that's the fastest you can run, move over, because I'm really in a rush. And that bear was gaining inch by inch and reached out for the final clinch as Elmer saw the fence around his place. He jumped the fence and landed hard young six to beat across the yard and slammed the door in that Bruin's face. And the bear stood trying to get inside as Elmer saw the place to hide and Mrs. Jones began to pull her hair. She said, this has got to stop. You better let the matter drop. Elmer said, honey, you tell it to the bear. She said, listen here, you goon. How come you think you're Daniel Boone, whose appetite on bear meat used to thrive? He said, honey, I'm sure you're well aware that Daniel always killed his bear, but I done brought this baby home alive. Singing, bless your heart. All right, lean over and pinch your neighbor. Or you're about the man that <laughs> I love stories. The man that walked into the into the uh, drug store and he walked back to the drug counter and he said to the farmers, he said, uh, uh, "Can you give me something for hiccups?" Druggist never looked around. Finally, he said, "Hey, hey, hey, buddy." Can you give me something for hiccups? And about that time, the guy just turned around and just slapped him upside the wall. Whammo! He said, what was that for? He said, well, you don't have hiccups anymore, do you? He said, I didn't need it. It was for my wife out in the car. <laughs> Old Jeff sitting over here at the piano. He's, he got married after he started singing. And uh, they live in Kentucky. He has a little boy named Nicholas and, and, and a couple other kids. In fact, you know, they keep in touch by calling home, you know, they, as most of the groups do, and, and they call home at night, and, and, and of course there are reasons, too. I, I remember one time he, Jeff was away, and his wife had, had uh, Nicholas down for prayer, and she said, uh, 
uh, said, now, Nicholas, it's time for us to say our prayers. She said, now, do you know why we pray every night? And Nicholas said, yes, Mom, because the rates are cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> I love the family. Don't you love the family? I do, too. And oh, when you have your wife, what a wonderful thing. Remind me of the story of the preacher that was going up the road. He looked over in the cemetery, and he saw this man just, just leaning over this grave, beating on the grave. And he was saying, why did you die? Why did you die? Why did you die? Well, the preacher said, surely he must be brokenhearted. And so he got stopped his car and walked over there and laid his hand on his shoulder. And he said, God bless you, sir. I know you must miss her. And, and surely, but God understands. And God can feel that. Oh, no. He said, it's not my wife. It's her first husband. Why did you die? Why did... <laughs> not long ago, he was preaching at his own church one Sunday morning. And he did a, just a great job. But he was standing at the door, as most preachers do, shaking hands as the folks went out to this lady came by, had a little boy by the hand, and she said, Oh, Brother Steve, what a sermon, what a sermon. She said, I'm just full, I'm just full up to you. He said, Thank you, ma'am. God bless you. Oh, she said, You just don't understand. That's, that's probably the greatest sermon that I've heard you preach in months. And she said, I'm so full, I'm so full. He said, well, God bless you, ma'am. I appreciate it. Oh, she said, Brother Steve, you've been here for years, and I don't believe you've ever preached any better. She said, my cup is so full. Well, he didn't know anything more to say to her, so he turned to the little boy that was there, and he said, how'd you feel about it, son? The little boy said, i got a belly full of it, too. <laughs> we just got all kinds of, of ministers on trip, and a lot of Baptists. Did you hear about the two ladies walking up the street, you know, and two young ladies, and this frog hopped up, hopped up on the side of the sidewalk? Looked up to the lady and said, if one of you ladies will kiss me, I'll turn into a Baptist preacher. Well, this one girl looked at the other one. She just reached down and picked it up and put the frog in her pocket. The girl said, my goodness, aren't you going to kiss it and see if it works? She said, oh, no. She said, a Baptist preacher is dime a dozen, but a talking frog is hard to find. I mean, <laughs> he doesn't disturb anybody. Just He was in school. you know. He was just a young boy, and he was in school, and he was trying to learn English. And, and get it just right, you know, and he was learning the how to say we were and, and I was, and he was struggling with it, you know, and the teacher said, now, now, Larry, do you understand the difference between sit and set? He said, I don't know, teacher, I don't know. She said, well, think of this. Would you say that your hen sit or set? He said, I don't know, teacher, but when she cackles, is she laying or lying? <laughs> I love that old country boy, I tell you. Well, the Wilburn is a... He's a minister, and he's a pastor of churches, and he's a Baptist preacher. We've got a lot of Baptist preachers on here. One time when he was pastoring a church, a, a lady came over to him, a man and a wife, a lady, and they did live down the street a ways, and they said, aren't you Reverend Wilburn, the pastor of the Baptist church here? And he said, yes, and they said, well, you know, our pet dog died, and we love that dog so much, and said that we wondered if you would sort of give it a funeral and bury it and maybe give us a little funeral and he said well the Wilbur said well you know I, I, we're sorry but we just don't have a funeral to bury animals we just we just don't do that and and said uh, you know we're sorry we'll pray for you we know that you probably feel a loss but we just don't have any funeral to bury animals and they said well we sure wanted someone to say some last words over it and help us to bury it and do something. He said, well, I wish we could. He said, but we just don't have a funeral for animals. And they said, do you know where the Presbyterian church is? And they said, he said, why? I think there's one down the street. And he said, well, we were going to give the preacher about $100. We'll go down there. He said, just a moment. You didn't tell me that that dog was Baptist, you know. <laughs> when they change pastors, the chairman of the deacon board always invites the new pastor out to his house the first time for, for, you know, for dinner. It's kind, of, it's kind of the way it's done. When you get a new pastor, the chairman of the deacon board invites the pastor out. Well, they attended their church up in Ohio, and sure enough, they got a new pastor. Well, Brother Spencer said, well, we better have him out to the house for dinner. So they invited the new pastor out to their house, and they sat down, you know, and they started to eat. And Brother Spencer, you know how he is, so nice. So he said, Brother Pastor, he said, we're so glad to have you. I said, said, my wife, she fixed chicken for you. She knows that preachers like chicken. And we, we got some Wade, his little boy, said, Daddy, it's a buzzard. He said, well, Wade, don't say that. That's terrible. He said, uh, uh, Brother Spencer, said, Pastor, we're glad you're here. He said, we, we've specially fixed, uh, fixed some chicken for you. Now, we knew the preacher. His Wade said, Daddy, it's a buzzard. He said, son, you shouldn't say that. Sir. 
Why do you keep saying it's buzzard? So well, I heard you and Mama talking and said we might as well have the old buzzard and get it over with. <laughs> Anybody here know Conway Twitty? Anybody here have ever heard of Conway Twitty? You know, sure you have. Well, Brother Burgess has always, I mean, Brother uh, Hayes has always been, uh, you know, an outgoing type person. And, and so he, he was holding a revival at this, at this community. And he didn't know anything. He thought, well, I've got some extra time. I'll just make some house calls and invite these folks to churches along the way. And, and he started down in about the first house he came to. Uh, uh, one lady said, oh, you're gone way to it. He said, no, I, some people say I look like him, but that's not me, ma'am. I'm, I'm just an evangelist over here at the Baptist Church. Well, oh, she said, well, okay. So he went down two or three more doors down, you know, and another lady came out. Oh, you're gone way to it. He said, no, 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 ma'am. I'm just an evangelist over here at the Baptist Church. And, uh, and I just wanted to invite you by. Well, about another four or five houses and knocked on the door. And then this beautiful young lady came to the door. She said, oh. Conway, my favorite person. He said, hello, darling. <laughs> no, I just made that up. I, that, that, 